I am honored to stand before all of you as a representative of Solbury's senior class. I would like to tell you what my five years at Solbury has meant to me. I remember the first time I walked on Solbury's campus, the summer before eighth grade. I sat in the main office in the main office with my parents and Scott, who was the middle school director at the time. He looked me in the eyes and said, you will play softball here. <laughs> when I nodded in blind agreement, I had no idea that that was just the beginning of five years of advice and guidance. <laughs> but here we are now, the product of an abundance of advice and guidance, both spoken and unspoken, and not only from Scott. The unspoken advice really amounts to a license that Silver grants to each and every one of us. It is a license of freedom to try things on and off, to step out of our comfort zones without stepping out of a comfortable place. I jokingly remind myself that this is our last opportunity to try something that we're really bad at and still get a standing ovation. <laughs> For me, Solbury offered an escape from the conformist Lily White Public School community of Hunter County, New Jersey, from the never-ending turkey and American cheese Wonder Bread sandwiches. By contrast, Solbury has been a place of exposure to the rest of what's out there. From being served jambalaya in a dining hall lined with foreign flags, to hearing Chinese and Korean while walking from class to class, Solbury offered up an environment that encouraged an awareness of the world outside the Delaware Valley. I will always remember Solbury by its culture of friendship, respect, and hominess. It has really been a home for me, and I mean that literally sometimes. Since eighth grade, I have, more or less, eaten every meal in this room. <laughs> Why are you still here? People would ask me at 6.30 every day. In reality, my parents' work schedules to thank for the long days, but Silbury's embracing environment made sure that I was taken care of. When I lost power in my house during the free Halloween blizzard this past fall, I actually moved in. With Tom's air mattress and spare blankets, I was an honorary member of the girls' dorm for a whole week. I had never known a school where the barriers between grades were virtually invisible. When I was in eighth grade, I was befriended by seniors, and that wasn't considered weird. I was welcomed through sports, clubs, and mutual hangout spaces by kids who were much older than me. I remember my parents comfortably dropping their 13-year-old off at Jeff Barrow's 18th birthday party, knowing that it was a safe environment. I don't think such fluidity in age and friendships exists outside of this environment, and if it does, it's rare. I'll never forget the time when I told Petito I was interested in getting a job at the Love and Oven, a restaurant in Frenchtown. Claiming he had an inn with the owners, he drove me there, and together we sat with them over a cup of coffee. The next thing I knew, I was being hired. Nor will I forget being invited to spend snow days at Diane's house, talking books, vacations, and jobs with Hannah, being tutored for SAT math by Britta, who arguably cared more about my score than I did, or just treasuring every day that I was taught by Steve Buto. When it comes to attracting people who are non-conformists, sometimes to a painful extent, Solbury is expert. It's not viewed as abnormal for someone to walk around campus with a full cardboard outfit, and I mean all limbs encased in cardboard boxes, or a crowd forming around a ukulele player in between classes. I love that Solbury allows people to be themselves in their purest form, that among the pressures and confusion of high school, people can find the things that make them tick. For me, that means printing photos in the darkroom during free periods or demonstrating Zumba moves during in the library. I've been able to cultivate a spirit of adventure, curiosity, and confidence, and I have this place to thank for much of that. Silver community has become a part of me, and even though I'll be leaving this campus in June, I will take so much of it with me. I've been with most of you, the class of 2012, for these past four years, some of you for longer, some of you have been since birth, Cooper. You all have been a source of inspiration. Cheryl was losing in Scrabble by over 50% to Hannah and Sarah Sargent, and being held hostage by Nathan after what went from an impromptu singing performance on a snow day to a full-fledged recital where attendance was mandatory. I'll miss Tom endangering students' lives with rubber band slingshots and Scott making fun of my perfectionist tendencies. But I've learned more from Sulphur than I'll ever be able to recount. From how to process a roll of film to how to write a fairly decent research paper overnight, skills that will clearly benefit me in college. I've been encouraged to make mistakes here, to step outside of my comfort zone, and to work hard out of respect for myself, my peers, and my teachers. There's no way of knowing how I'd be different if I hadn't been a part of Sulphur in these past five years. I certainly wouldn't have international friends or an appreciation for hip hop. But something tells me that I wouldn't be as happy with myself either, or as confident in my ambitions. 
It is undeniable that Silbury has helped shape me as a person, and for that, I will always be thankful.